morning, everyone. I know that you have been expecting somebody else here, but uh, President Rowe sends her most sincere regards and apologies. She has been exposed to the virus and cannot participate today. So you have me, and let's you know, let's see how we can uh, we can do this together. Uh, and I can tell you that the president, of all the things that she had to miss because of this exposure, this was the one that. Uh, really made her much more um, upset that, that she would miss. So that tells you how important uh, your presence here and her participation in this has been, and so is mine. Um, I'm almost finishing my third year as provost, uh, and those of you who um, do not really know what a provost does, uh, I'm the chief academic officer of the university. My name is Peggy Agures, and I'll be happy to interact with you and share with you uh, the university's appreciation for your presence here today. So we have great, some, um, some great participants uh, to celebrate you and your presence on our campus. Um, so welcome 2022 Mandela Fellows. Uh, welcome presidential precinct colleagues. Um, members of the William and Mary Board of Visitors, Ms. Roday and Ms. Johnson, public officials, Peter Blake and Ted Maslin, and everyone who's supporting this shared endeavor, which is to actually develop leaders of communities uh, around the world. So it's, it's very wonderful to have the Young African Leadership Initiative back to William and Mary. Last time, this event was hosted here, it was three years ago in 2019, a few months before I joined. Um, and the pandemic uh, really accelerated a lot of things, and not, not in a positive way. But one of them, one thing that it accelerated was change. And you can view change positively and negatively, but we choose to see it as a positive thing, that a silver lining that came out of a difficult time for all of us. So um, I, I just, uh, I just want to make, um, make sure that we start by understanding what brought us together and some lessons that we've learned. Um, before we celebrate you, uh, the 2022 cohort of Mandela Fellows, I want to pause a little bit and reflect on how these past three years um, shifted the way we imagine leadership and how we develop leaders for a changing world. So what we learned is that change is inevitable. And again, it might sound simple or even trite, but it is important to, to remember that this is a very powerful notion. We all have stories of change, stories of change that affected us, stories of change that we chose for ourselves, change that we did not choose. But change precedes and leads to periods of growth that challenge us and make us better leaders. So let's think back um, a few months um, back a few years, actually, uh, in, during the first several months of the pandemic. What did we know? We knew that it was serious. We knew that we had to act. And yet, we didn't know much else, and we didn't know a lot for certain, other than we had to change, and we had to change quickly. So we may not be able to control every minute of change, but we can control how we change, how we learn, and how we move forward. So some questions that have emerged through this process and that we usually here at William & Mary ask ourselves as academic leaders and educators is how might we? I'd like to share two examples of how William & Mary is approaching this question. How might we? First example, a question. How might we advance democracy in the 21st century? Some of what I'm gonna tell you, you already know, and it's pretty obvious, but it has to be said, nevertheless, to remind ourselves of who we are and where we are. So Williamsburg is one of the cradles of our nation's democracy. In 2026, we will mark the US 
semi-quincentennial, which is 250 years as a nation. Parenthetically, this is a word that is a challenging word to pronounce, especially with a foreign accent. So yeah, I need a little bit of you know, encouragement from you as I'm not <laughs> saying this. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, William and Mary has uh, embraced our obligation uh, to restore, renovate, and re-envision what it means to be part of a pluralistic democracy, protect institutions in a way that is more equitable, more just. And this has led us to two key areas of impact. Uh, first, double down on William and Mary's abiding commitment to evidence-based arguments and discovery as a public good, and to rekindle and model civil discourse convening disparate views to advance democratic values. The second example I want to mention is another question, the answer to another question. How might we deepen our global connections? So international connections are at the core of this university's DNA. And our vision is to convene great hearts and great minds to understand and change the world for the better. As a university, we are thinking about what it means to serve the global community in the 21st century. And my invitation to each one of you is to think with us about opportunities for collaboration and partnership so that we do this together. William and Mary is very proud to host you and grateful to have you here physically and for this gathering of the next generation of global leaders. And we look forward to your time here on this campus. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce our uh, keynote speaker, uh, a man that needs no introduction. And yet, I wanna say a couple of things. Justice John Charles Thomas, we are very fortunate to have him here today. Justice Thomas is one of Virginia's pioneering leaders, a longtime friend of our university, and an accomplished orator. Justice Thomas was appointed to the Virginia Senate Supreme Court in 1983, and at the age of 32, he was the first black justice and the youngest ever judge to be named to, the Virginia, to Virginia's highest bench. Thomas was appointed to William and Mary's governing board in 2006 and served until 2017, making him the longest serving board member of this institution in modern history. In 2018, the Alumni Association inducted him as an honorary alumnus in recognition to his service to William and Mary. Judge Thomas is an accomplished and talented poet and has addressed this community at important university celebrations over the years. When I heard him speak um, my, for the first time at our opening convocation ceremony last year, he expressed a memorable, in a memorable way an invitation. And the invitation was to be magnificent builders in your whole life and come back here with the things that you build and discover. This is an amazing, amazing quote that it was part of so many others that Judge Thomas shared with us uh, during that event. So it is my great pleasure to welcoming Judge John Th Charles Thomas and hear what he has to say today. Thank you.